So I thought I would make an update video on my glue batteries I've been working on after watching Lin Motor's great uh, videos about what he's doing with the same type of idea. He's also working with uh, he's also working with glue battery, but he's also doing something pretty clever with gel batteries or gel cells that use gelatin and aluminum and distilled water. And he's getting great results, and he's powering things like pulse motors and all that. So he's making great results too. Uh, I just want to show what these cells are are like. Uh, they're exposed to the air, but he limiter made a great uh, had proposed a great idea to put these in maybe in like a bag and spray some loom water on it, which would keep energizing these cells. I'm gonna look into doing that here soon, but here's what my uh, glue batteries are up to here lately. Uh, I, got, I marked my cells with dates. Um, I don't know if y'all can see that, but it's the 24th, 424, uh, 2011. And just keep that in mind because this is how long these cells, the dates on these cells are when they were first created. So uh, the first cell, the one I very first messed with was this one over here. So we're just going to show you the voltage on it. You can see it goes up, so that's in the millivolt range too. Like I said, it's been exposed to air. I've been tracking the voltage on it. It's kind of it's been going down in general, but I've seen it go up during during certain parts of the day. I think it might be have to do with uh, water getting into the cell. Here's another one. It's all in plastic because uh, plastic's an insulator. But this is not your ordinary glue. This is actually a waterproof Loctite. Uh, there's no date on this one, but it was created about, I say, last week. We'll hook it up, and show you the power on this one. And you can see the power on that on the waterproof Loctite cell. It's about 100 millivolts. And of course, the meter does act like a load, so it will drain these cells. I, I've been trying different metals too. Uh, I've been experimenting with the same metals, which is this guy right here. This is uh, all-purpose caulk. It's this stuff right here, and both these uh, two right here, two leads, are actually aluminum wire. So they're both for the same metals, and you can see the voltage on them when I hook it up. So there's power in there, about 25 millivolts. And when you start dealing with the same metals, it starts to get a little funky. Uh, I have to explain that a little bit later in the video. But uh, there's another cell I want to point out is this one. It's it's two different metals. It's copper and aluminum wire, and Elmer's glue. This one was created on the 13th day of uh, April, 2011. And you can see there's no corrosion. This one's been sitting shorted out for that long. So for 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, since the 13th day. And today is the 24th day. Now you can see there's no corrosion on it. It's been sitting shorted out. I'll remove the shorts so I can show you. There's still power in this little cell even though it's been shorted out. Of course the copper is positive. And as you can see, there's power. Not much, but because it was shorted out, but there's power there, about 70 millivolts. So, there you have it. Even when it's been shorted out, it's still been producing power. I'll put that off the side. And here's another one right here. It's, this is using the all-purpose caulk, but the pr um, plates are actually graphite. So graphite is not a metal. And even though it's not metal, it still produces power, but the power is very minute. It's very, very small. So I'll put it on there. And you can see about 7 millivolts. So even though it's not a metal, it's still producing power. So if it's not metal, how is it going to produce a galvanic reaction? That yet, I don't know, but I do know there's power there. As though, even though it's very small, it's something. 
And I also, I also noted about these same metals or using the same uh, plates like graphite and graphite or aluminum and aluminum for both the anode and cathode using one metal. I've noticed a very strange effect about these and I've yet to understand it but I've mostly been studying the graphite ones because they produce small power. And you notice as it's going down it's losing power. Alright? And it's because the meter is acting like a load the load will drain the power source which is the glue battery and as it drains it it'll get to zero volts so the same effect will happen on a capacitor you hook the capacitor up to the meter multimeter digital meter uh, it will drain the capacitor and the capacitor will reach zero volts and pretty much stay there there's no real reason that it can't really charge anymore there's no power to give back to it so it's going to be dead so it's going to be zero volts now, our interesting effect I've been noticing with these same metal glue batteries, especially the graphite ones, is that once it gets to zero volts, it does not stop. It'll go to negative one volts, negative two volts, negative three volts, negative four volts, and so on. I haven't really tested to see how far it go, but it does go well beyond past the zero volts. And it's all from the same metals. I haven't really noticed it that much in the different metals ones like the copper and aluminum wire ones. I don't really notice them that much. I'm mostly dealing with the uh, graphite ones because they produce a small amount of power so less time I have to wait around for it to go to the negative range. So I'm calling this a type of negative charging. So it leads me to believe is it cause it is it five millivolts or is it five hundred thousand volts? You know, if it's gonna charge. If it's gonna charge when it's hooked up to a load, that's a pretty unique thing to consider. Uh, I've never seen anything else like this happen before except when I was experimenting with the same metal wire battery which I called the wire capture at first. Uh, I noticed that when I was given a load of the power started outputting more. So it's just an interesting, interesting thing to note. Uh, for some odd reason, even though it's draining right now, I wish I could keep the camera on there long enough to show you that it will go to the negative range. And the problem with this meter is that you have to keep it from going to sleep once it because it'll shut itself off to save power. But uh, I guess I have to show you guys the wires I'm using. Sorry about the mess. Um, there's the wire. Here's the wire setup. There's, uh, there's no trickery going on. Uh, I do wish I could show you guys it go to the negative range because it's a very unique thing. To watch. It just takes a while. The closer it gets to zero, the longer it takes to get to the negative range. It's like I need a meter that drains faster, you know? It's a bigger load. But I don't have like that because that would be a bad meter to use. But yep, there you have it. Uh, interesting thing and an update on the glue battery.